Welcome. If you are joining us from our previous sessions, you know we are generally comedic, semi-intelligent, gay as fuck, and often not very serious people. However, today's film requires restraint, complex and nuanced discussions about World War II, war, the art, the nature of art, and the Criterion Collection. Therefore, we have made the executive decision to be silly up top, followed by sincerity. So without further ado, here is everything funny about Come and See. This concludes everything funny about Come and See. I now turn it to the intellectuals. I am Movie K Man the Third, also known as K, also known as Keegan, and I will be one of your hosts this evening. I am accompanied by a well-renowned person of high intellect, my co-host Naf, who will make a self-degrading comment about his own intellect. Hush. Oh my goodness. Um, how dare you? You can't even put your phone on do not disturb. Ow! <laughs> this episode is cursed! <laughs> uh, the universe doesn't want us to share this film with people, but we want to. And uh, yeah, but we will so much press that. on! We will not let tyranny and oppression and fascism get us down. Nav, take it away! Exactly right. And um, yeah, thank you for that intro. Um, beautiful as always, uh, Mr. Movie Man. And yeah, I'm really excited to get into this episode too. Um, yeah, I'm an F on second thought. I have fantastic intellect and I'm really, really smart. There we are. <laughs> I now move to introduce the final member of our trio. The person who brought us this powerful film. The brave soul who dared to give us a more intense film than Schindler's List. We are truly going forward into the black with our dear friend, Chase. Uh, hi there. Uh, I am Chase. I am at forward into the black on TikTok and Twitch and all social media. Um, but yeah, I, I love sharing this film with people. It's uh, an intense film. Uh, as Keegan said, there is not a funny or fun moment in this movie um no. and i'm i'm really excited to talk about it there's a lot to talk about with this oh movie. there's so much it's it's a long film it's an intense film it's an uncomfortable film but we'll we'll get into a lot of that more but yeah i'm very excited to talk to you guys about it well and we've been so like excited to have you on this show like ever since we met back in celebration obviously we knew of you and like had this thing there but being able to actually connect with you and being able to have this was a phenomenal thing for both of us and we are very excited to be able to talk about a film that frankly has been on my watch list for a bit ever since uh letterbox wouldn't shut up about it and uh i feel that that's the case but naf uh what are we doing here what the hell are we doing here? Why are we even attempting this at this present why, moment? Uh, why are we here is very different from why viewers would be here as well. Uh, well, I mean, not really. Uh, we're here because we have to be. We're contractually ob obligated uh, to put out an episode every week, and uh, we hate we hate doing it. So if you're here, stop stop watching because then we don't have to come back and do it every week. Uh, no, of course, I'm kidding. We absolutely love doing this, and this segment of the One with the Films podcast is known as the weekly watch list. And on the weekly watch list, we essentially are bringing new things to your watch list each week. The way it works is every time you come and check out an episode, somebody on that episode will have not seen the film of the week. So somebody's checking out something new for the first time. The way it started, usually it was me introducing stuff to Keegan and vice versa, trying to get each other to watch uh, some of our favorite films that we hadn't seen before. And that's expanded now into introducing guests. So now guests can bring us films that we've never seen before. We get to check them out for the first time and uh, essentially have uh, a fantastic old time, usually. You know, we look forward to these because the films don't usually break your heart for two hours and 23 okay. minutes seconds. Came, came on here with The Illusionist. I came on here with Schindler's List. That is absolutely mean, not true. Yeah, that is right. not true. Our active goal is to break hearts. Absolutely. Just do it in more unique ways. <laughs> No, yeah, you're definitely right on the money there. But um, yeah, so it's a great place to be if you are trying to find more films that you want to watch. You want to kind of uh, open your uh, minds to new kinds of films or things like that. Uh, or even if you are 
uh, trying to get through your watch list, chances are you're going to find some of our films on there as well. Because as you know, self-proclaimed like film lovers, we also surprisingly have not seen as many films as you might expect. So yeah, that's what we're doing here. Welcome to One with the Films. We all have that one film that we have not seen. We all have that one thing that we know we should have. Yeah. And we all have all that stuff there. And we're here to help you out with that. And, you know, here's the thing. If you're listening live, you actually get a little sneak peek at whatever our episode of the next week is. So if you're listening Mm -hmm. live or you get a chance to check on our social medias or you listen to this the week of, we always announce our next episode and our guest at the very end of this show so stick around to the end and you'll find out what we're doing next it is a little bit more upbeat so i've heard and uh well let's get to it so uh chase uh you brought this film you brought this film into to us did. today you did this to us I and did. um uh <laughs> and uh so now obviously uh this is come and see 1985 you brought this in and i you know obviously we we're going to get to why we're going to get to why you wanted to bring this in and what it means to you all joking aside because it is a very powerful film and i am very excited to talk about that part but naf uh you have some not quite fun facts about this film mm. yeah well in this state like like chase was saying like for this film in particular we're going to do something wild and just go with facts uh they're not so fun uh and some of the ones are inspired quite- by our friend tate yeah, the, some of these are quite uh, the opposite of fun, if I'm honest. But uh, yeah, let's let's dive right in. I'll tell you guys a little bit about Come and See from 1985. So on a budget of $2.5 million and directed by Ilem Klimov, this masterpiece of Soviet cinema screened for the first time at the 1985 Cannes Film Festival. It explores the effects of war on innocent civilians with an emphasis on children and has a cult following, with an 8.3 out of 10 on IMDb from 50,000 reviews and 4.6 out of 5 on Letterboxd as well. While not explicitly based on a true story, it is inspired by the experiences of the director, Ilem Klimov's family, as well as many others during World War II. It's touted as one of the most realistic and brutal depictions of war on film and grossed $72,000 in the US and Canada, but then went on to bring in about 21 million US worldwide. It failed to get any uh, any Oscar nominations, but won Best Restored Film at the Venice Film Festival in 2017. Live ammunition was used in this film. So it interviews the actor for um, Fleora Alexei uh, Kravchenko has described actual bullets passing some 10 centimeters above his head. And if you've seen the film, you can probably put together a couple more key moments in which the live ammunition impacted the performances of both human and non-human uh, actors, if you will. Rough uh, actors, if you will. Rough. <sighs> Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 tempted to say the joke, but I'm going to resist because I have <laughs> control. Uh, but well, I want to dive into a little bit of what each of us knew, sort of going into the film. We know that uh, Chase brought the film to us, so I mean, I can go out pretty quickly and say I didn't know this existed again, which is kind of my common sentiment each time I come on a on a, the podcast with an episode that has a film from a guest. And I love that. It's one of my favorite things coming in and going, I didn't know this was oh, a thing yeah. and now I do. I love that. Um I did uh recognize uh seeing the title for it because I've spent a lot of time on like the letterbox lists and they've got, you know, best ranked all time and as we saw like four point six out of five is like easily it's in the top 100 on letterbox so i've seen it before uh just there but didn't know what it was about or anything and i didn't even put the dots together when you recommended the film to us as well chase like i heard it and i heard it's a rough watch and my brain went straight to is it going to be something like that serbian film or something where like it just is super like gory or visceral and i'm really glad that it wasn't like that kind of thing however um, it was something so much worse. Bunch of other <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, but and with that, like I, I had similar to you, Neff. I, I knew of this film via TikTok. Like, there's been a couple of people that I follow that talk about this film. Uh, mm. And when you suggested it, Chase, uh, I, that was the one that I wanted to do immediately because I was like, I want to see what this is about. I want to see what this, you know, because everybody talked about how disturbing it was, and I was like. It's kind of like when uh, I am opposition defiant ADHD. So it's it's like when people recommend things to me, I often have the opposite reaction. Uh, And so this one, when everybody's like, oh, it's so disturbing. I don't know if people can take it. A part of me goes, 
how disturbing how 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 disturbing we talking very uh, but uh like it's one of those things that I, I was curious just to see like what kind of what we were really dealing with and uh, so with this, I'm curious how you got introduced to this film and kind of especially, obviously it means something to you, something especially very powerful to you. Uh, I'm curious to know kind of what that process was bringing it to us. How do you see it for the first time? Bring us up to speed. Yeah, uh, I so one of my old roommates was the person who showed me this film. And I it's funny that now if you brought up a Serbian film, because like I have always had groups of friends that it was always like we get together, we watch fucked up cinema and and like we have a good time with it like we watch you know serbian film martyrs uh human centipede trilogy all that stuff and like those are like disturbing gross films and so when anyone kind of like how you said when you when it's like oh this is a disturbing film i'm like okay whatever fine like i've i've been to the depths of the internet and seen like the weird faux snuff films and i'm like okay it's, <laughs> it's all it's all fake whatever and he was like oh well we should watch come and see it's a really good movie um and his his girlfriend's from kazakhstan and another kind of fun fact is like the restoration translation is not 100 percent accurate so there's she said that there's some things that are said in that movie that are a little bit more less fun than the translation says and e um, even given the translation like it's it's worse right, than that it's not yeah it's not good <laughs> <laughs> it, it, not like not like like you know the scenes and the story don't change but she's like that's sure. not what they said uh they said something worse yeah um, i experienced that a bit this but, year when i was watching blue beetle uh and they like the the family speaking in spanish and they're like swearing i think at one point he's like yeah like fuck her mom or something like that and it, in the uh subtitles literally goes fight get her and i was like what <laughs> Yeah. What do you mean? That, is that, reminds me of, that reminds me of like Joji, Filthy Frank, like doing like Japanese subtitles, but he was saying something way worse. <laughs> oh, uh, I love it. But um, but no, like this this movie, as someone who like enjoys fucked up movies, gross movies, super gory movies, like someone like one year for Christmas or Christmas or a birthday, like gifted me a, like a, a Japanese version of like dvd box set of the guinea pig collection i was like hell yeah Fuck. this is great uh and i'm like I great I, I went into come and see like expecting this and what i think is so interesting about this movie and why it, like it i don't want to say impacted me but it stuck with me was this is not a gory movie this is not mm. an overtly violent movie this is not like someone gets shot and there's blood everywhere and you know that kind of stuff that's not this movie it is it is the way it's shot it is the way it's presented to you and it is just like more or less from the opening scene on the beach it is non-stop yeah. uh like it it doesn't let up uh, even when like in the scene in the when they're in the woods in the rain, uh, when it's uh, Glasha and Flora, like it's supposed to be like the happy moment, but it's not. Yeah. It, it like, feels it's, so unnerving. It's, it's so unsettling. It is just like this, this sped up dancing and stuff like that. It's just, it's not it's not fun to watch. Like it's a movie I enjoy experiencing like. But it's not like, yeah, you're going to you're going to have a good time. Like there's there's movie like there's World War Two Vietnam movies that have these moments of like, hey, we're the comrades. We're chuckling and joking. And hey, here's the thing that doesn't happen in the movie. Like it's, no. there's no moment. It has like there's no one line. moment where it kind of does. But like this whole film is caked in that like dreary yeah like dreariness a little bit but and it's but that even those moments it's like don't fool me don't fool me i know nothing good can happen when they're when they're bringing the mannequin and, and they're joking yeah. with each other is like one moment where like they're they're having a good time but like at the same time like they're getting shot at and then when you realize they're getting shot at with bullets not with like special effects and like little mini explosions in the tree mm -hmm. they're shooting they're shooting at they are literally being shot shots. at yeah and it's just like uh it's just it's so i don't want to say it's difficult to watch but it is it is just one of those things where you you don't smile when watching it <laughs> like at all 
Oh yeah. Like but, I, th- yeah. there was, yeah. And, and well, and speaking of which, uh, as we're going into our discussion today, Naf, do you want to uh, update our audience on obviously our spoiler policy with sort of how things go? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea behind the, the, the weekly watch list as well is that by giving you guys a week in advance to, to know what film we're going to talk about and then come and join us in chat, the idea is that you've watched the film uh, coming into the episode. If you haven't, that's okay. Uh, just be mindful that when we talk about it for the next, uh, you know, like an hour or so, uh, we're not going to be uh, throwing out uh spoiler alerts or anything like that like this this is your spoiler alert like we're going to be talking about the film as three people who've seen it with the uh, expectation that you've probably seen it as well if you haven't uh you still can hang around for this this is totally fine if anything it might prompt you to actually go and check the film out and see what we're talking about uh in in real life i suppose you know for lack of a better a better phrase but yeah be mindful we're not going to be uh avoiding any spoilers necessarily so if you do want to go into the film completely blind videos and uh podcasts episodes are available on demand anywhere you get your podcasts so here on youtube uh spotify apple podcasts all that kind of stuff yeah that being said i reckon we can jump right into probably our first uh topic uh of conversation and uh, i wanted to kick us off where we talk about art essentially and its meaning and i know that uh Kay, you really want to talk about the, the kind of the point of, of art in general. So I was wondering if maybe you could kick us off and we'll go from yeah. there. Yeah. Chase and I were having a little conversation off mic and something that I know that we kind of wanted to get into that I thought might as well kick it off because I think that the, especially with this story, I feel there is nothing better than to do this. Um, art has a very, like, uh, obviously art has a purpose is uh, like, I, I feel when you look at films like this, especially at Chase, as you were saying, this is a hard, hard watch. And we've watched some of these kind of films on this podcast before, like Schindler's List to me, probably prior to this, was probably the hardest watch, like at least I had seen, but from a emotional, you know, like you have horror and things like that, and that's meant to affect you in a different way. Mm. But there's a certain almost weird comfort to horror because you know that that's fake. This is very different. Mm -hmm. This is what art can be is art kind of like the force. You have kind of the light side, which is kind of the beauty and the things there. And art is also incredibly dark. And it's meant to warn you about, you know, things to avoid. It's cautionary tales. It's things like that. And I I personally feel when I think about art and I think about what does it mean to create, what does it mean to make something like this? And when you make something like this, as, as Chase was saying, when there is no levity, there is no relief, there is no coming up for air, I feel it, it has a similar intention to something like Schindler's List uh, or things like that, but it doesn't – it has a very different aim – a very different goal while being in the overall same tone of things. And I, I kind of want to open up the, the discussion to the floor, but like when I was watching this, it really made me ponder uh, something that we'll revisit later, but it is, you know, uh, Chase, you mentioned something in your video, which is like, should stuff like that, should movies like this exist? Like, and what is the purpose of, of stuff like this? And I think that this film really opens up your eyes when you know how accurate this movie is. Because it's one thing to go, oh my God, that was so excessive. But it wasn't. That was what happened. Yeah. Like, how how do our brains even begin to reconcile that? Mm. And that's the thing that this film really triggers in me in the idea of art being difficult yeah that art isn't the oh let me think about purpose and meaning and things that that art can be fucking horrifying yeah and i don't know if you guys have thoughts on that but like i wanted to kind of broad topic open up i know chase you want to talk a lot about the kind of the anti is this an anti-war film and things there and i am really curious to know your thoughts on all of this yeah, I mean, it's when you when you bring up a movie like Schindler's List, which is an incredible film, like it is like an achievement of filmmaking. Um, and it is also difficult to watch. But what I think Schindler's List and every other movie that has tackled the subject of like the Holocaust or World War II or the Vietnam War, whatever it may be, like these terrible moments in history is 
the best way I can explain it is those are museum pieces. Those are something you're watching through a glass wall. Um, and while mm. Schindler's list is really good from the first scene on the beach in come and see the trend of the film is the actors are looking directly into the camera. Um, and you are, you are a participant in the film. Come and see. Yeah. Um, you are there with them. They are looking at you and they are talking to you during this film. And that's where the, the pane of glass behind the museum display, which you get in Lake Schindler's list, saving private Ryan, full metal jacket, it goes away and you're no longer watching this drama about war, about the Holocaust. Um, and I think what's so interesting about this is like, it definitely does briefly touch on what kind of like, you know, the discrimination of like that was going on with the Germans, but this is a movie about the war. It's mm -hmm. not focused mm -hmm. on the Holocaust. It's not focused on that. It is about the brutality of the war. And when we can definitely talk about it with, if, when we get into like being anti-war, but when you look at something like uh, Saving Private Ryan and, you know, you see the, the violence that happens on that. And it's usually gunshots and explosions um, that are doing that. Whereas come and see it's much more than gunshots and explosions that's causing the violence. And it's, it's the psychological, it's the being, it's a know, whole different approach. Yeah. Like even, even the open, like even like after we get the title screen and we go into the, into Flores village and he's like, I'm joining the partisans because I want to stop the Germans. Like they're invading Belarus and we're a proud people and I want to do it. And his, and his mother's like, don't go. What are you doing? You can't go. You're going to leave your, your two toddler sisters and myself to do, to, to go off in this war that we know you're not going to come back from. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just like realizing that like, this was especially on, on the Russian front, that it was not this hoorah, we're going, no. we're going to Europe to, to fight the Nazis. Like, that's not how it's. <laughs> Like that's not at all what was happening. And I think in so many different lights, the movie like shines on like even the people of Russia, like you, you are they the protagonists of the film? Yes. Are they the good guys? It's like, it's mm. hard to say sometimes. Oh yeah. Uh, Cause I mean, you have that whole scene with the guy and his cow. So it's like, are these people fully like, you know, it, it, it really, dives into and Naf, I really want to know what you thought about all of this. Uh, obviously, like how did this sort of affect you mm. in that sort of, you know, idea? Because as you're saying, like, like Chase, you know, the unconventional filmmaking of this film really does lend itself to an unconventional discussion about it. Yeah, because this is not like it's not like other films, <laughs> but uh, it's, um, you know, it's it truly isn't, though. Like, as you said, like so many of the choices that it makes. And this is why I love and recommend to people um, checking foreign cinema out, like just because it has subtitles. Don't be intimidated by that, because you'll see filmmaking that you would never see in the West. Like you'll you'll like nobody would choose like very few people like they do the looking down the camera but they do it because they learned it from this mm -hmm. you know they learned it from films like this now i'm curious to know your point and thoughts about like all of this shit like kind of especially like with you know i know you you were really impacted by the pov shots yeah yeah well um a lot of of what resonated with this film to me does come in in the craft of it and uh i know we all kind of had thoughts on how it's kind of put together too and i'll touch a little bit on that sort of first topic and then it's probably a good point to just transition into that that second part as well um i was watching it and i know there was a particular the question from yourself chase around is this actually an anti-war film and it felt very similar to uh like the experience watching something like all quiet on the western front versus uh something like saving private ryan or even to a certain extent um 
like there are certain scenes in Fury that do that really well. That, are, that you know they yes. kind of start with that mentality of like this is what it's been. It's the the reality of of what war is, you know. And I think in particular, there's that scene with um, uh, with Logan Lerman and with John Bernthal after the the girl that he liked, the body's kind of like found. Like those moments that still are kind of westernized a bit there with you know like the the dialogue is very like come on boy this is what war is let's go. And in this film from the, the the lens of kids that are experiencing or a child essentially that's experiencing this it is very very different though uh i did find that sort of opening of him walking with the partisans and big smiles on his face and he's really excited compared to the the last shot of him um which oh my god yeah even to the point where there's the shot where they've got him in focus and the kid walks behind him and i thought oh he's like reflecting on where he's come from he turns around it's just another kid that was dressed like he was joining the partisans and going, and you just see yeah, the I thought the same thing in how what, what where their life has brought them. You just see this kid who looks like he's aged a million years, and you see the other kid who's just fresh. They just they just found him. He's ready to go. It is it's it, it's wild, um, yeah. And so in that sense, it feels uh to, to me like uh like it leans into that anti-war uh side of things quite a bit and then particularly how the ending does a bit of a almost the tarantino thing obviously well tarantino's doing the this thing right but you know like i was thinking in glorious bastards where you've got the the change of the history that kind of happens there um i was seeing that a little bit in everything this kid wanted as he's taking shots at that poster uh that i i can't really have an effect on the outcome of this like what i say what i do doesn't matter i recognize that now all i can do is just get my anger out on this little thing and dream about the only what bullets have he been. fires in the movie if i'm not yeah, mistaken that it is, he does not fire because I, I i re-watching and i was like that was my thought the first time watching it i was like does he ever shoot the gun he never shoots the gun not yeah. once until he shoots the, the poster of hitler mm. fucking 18 times yeah. oh god yeah, yeah. Well, and, 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 as and I said, think that's also oh, well. Go yeah. ahead, Chase. I want to hear your thoughts yeah. on all this. Yeah, I was saying like it's just it's just one of those things of like the footage, and it's just it's unconventional World War II footage of Adolf Hitler. Oh, yeah. That you like you, you we've all seen like the 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 YouTube snippet. All I can say the History Channel snippets mm. of like his his speeches and just the weird. Yeah. But it's like this is just like where they got the footage i don't know don't care to know frankly um, yeah but watching it and then watching it in reverse and it's just like and it's it's another thing about kind of like the unconventional filming this is a loud beat this is yeah. like it is it doesn't really i mean it lets up from sometimes but like i think other like movies like tenant have tried to do loudness and like dialogue second ambient sound first mm -hmm. and this one definitely does that and and it shows because flora is like multiple like three to four times in the film he has to he's like covering his ears because of everything going on around him you know not just the the initial the initial scene where um they're in the forest and the the bombs start dropping but just like him going to the other village that his family knew and they're just calling out his name constantly and they're che they're just checking on him making sure he's okay yeah but he can't handle it because and it's just like the sound doesn't let up and yeah. it's just one of those things of just like that that's the final scene or that that last little scene with um with him shooting the poster is so loud mm -hmm. and oh yeah it's just uh it's not only his gunshots it's just the the speeches and the crowds and it's and you the see music just, the music just it's the german citizens you're you, you, they look like you and me they look yeah. like anyone you would go see right now screaming hail hitler and you're just like this was not like the bad boys in the in the german outfits this was yeah. a whole nation this was a nation yeah the, that's uh, always what i've thought about like not to interrupt you with it with this but like oh, no please uh what i've thought about with stuff like this like i, I did a uh nafnosis i did a project on the holocaust like i did a, i was part of a documentary about it and i i was thinking about that and that that was the thing that in my research really affected me because it's one thing that i feel like we're very tempted and this movie touched on it in a in a huge way that i rarely am the person even in the privacy of my own home i'm rarely the person that yells at a screen 
Like I'm, I'm, I'm rarely am the person that will verbalize what I'm feeling when I'm watching something. This is one of the, I, I like in the past three years, I can name like three films that did this. And this is the third. Mm-hmm. And it's like this one, that moment when that asshole SS com- commandant changed out of his oh. clothes and he was in like, and it's like, oh, he's just a guy. Like he didn't. And it's them pleading for their lives after we just saw what the fuck they just did i was like oh you piece of shit oh you it, it, like especially i had a verbal reaction when he goes he didn't kill anybody and i'm like i just the, i had a i had an audible anger reaction to that like i i just i still i still it gets me heated I don't know about you, Naf, but that was like one that was like getting me. Hmm. Well, Chase, you had a point you wanted to make there. Oh, I was just saying the the scene under the bridge with the the captured <sighs> SS people from the barn, and we'll get to the we'll get to the barn. Oh, the barn <laughs> is its own thing. <laughs> um, like... the, the the barn is shocking and brutal. Um, but the scene under the bridge or like that, that makeshift bridge that they're under yeah. um, when you have like the the 40 something partisans and the dozen SS, um, it is such shocking thing because what's what's interesting about the movie is we when flora goes to the second village uh where everyone knows him and he sees um one of his one of the people from his village uh and this is probably the most graphic the movie gets is the guy who's been burned oh yeah um and it's just like i can't think of another movie that shows that and like what you know what burns just lingers. like on a person and, and it's just like he can't speak he's he's gross he's tough to look at he doesn't look human mm-hmm. um and then you fast forward in the movie and you and you see the barn scene and the the fire that goes on with that and, and it's just like fire in this movie is just not a good thing and when we get to the bridge with the ss and he's translating, and then you have the the pretty boy uh, SS guy not letting up, and just like you don't deserve a nation, like you don't deserve that, this. You are a parasite. Oh my god! And he just he he's like he's like, and what's what's shocking about that? And again, kind of like the 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 fact about this, not the fun fact. This is all firsthand accounts from like the Belarusian people. Um, and and that, that he's was not the letting up. Me. And 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 it's like you have of the guy like you talked about that like switched clothes and he's like he's i'm not this is his this is his words i'm not saying it's like he knows at this point he's like <laughs> like this dude is not and he's like he's he knows what's happening he knows what's gonna happen he's gonna die like this but he's like this is his belief this is his strong firm belief mm-hmm. and when when flora comes by with the gas can and he just sets it down and the guy just starts pouring it you like you know what's going to happen to them and it's just like you're like, yeah, yeah, burn them, burn them, shoot it, it, them, it burn them. Us, it's not enough. It's it, not enough. It, yeah. it, it makes and us it's that primal that it, nature that kicks in. Like you, you've just seen the worst things you could possibly see, and then you're going to be like, yeah, they deserve it. Yeah, yeah, a- absolutely. And that's and it kind of shows. And Naf, I really want to know what your take on it is. But kind of with the anti-war thing, it takes a very interesting unique toss to that where like it is anti-war by making you almost empathize with the anger and the horror and being like how horrific is this yeah but it's but it's looking at you and it says you wanted to burn them too and you're a little disappointed that it, it didn't happen yeah like that is the thing that is one of the most brilliant parts of that film is the fact that that is not how they die. The guy drops the fucking flame in the because it's like it, they set you up with like a very poetic end for these people. It's kind of like what you deal gets dealt back to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's not what happens. Yeah. And the audience is left with that in their hearts of without the relief of being like, yeah, fuck you guys. Like, yeah, like absolutely there. It's like that. No, it's never it's you're you are not satisfied. Mm. 
And that's the point. Yeah. And Naf, I'm curious to know what you feel about all of that in yeah. general, like especially like that scene, all those things. Mm, yeah. Well, one of the things that I jotted down uh, as, as something that we wanted to talk about, particularly in the unconventional filmmaking, is how uh, comfortable the director, Elam Klimov, <laughs> is in just letting things sit. You know, like it's like the longer you stare at it, the, the worse it gets. Uh, that is kind of feels like a theme throughout the film where all of these moments just go on so, so long and don't ever let up and pull their punches. And one of them I thought of was um, even outside of like a like an action element, but when uh, Fiora and, uh, sorry, what was the girl's name? I forget. Great. Glasha. 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 Glasha, yeah. So as they're wading through the bog and Glasha's seen the bodies and Fleura hasn't and just moving through the bog while she's kind of like looking back and I, you can just see her trying to figure out do I tell him do I not tell him like he knows where they went like I don't know and he's just dragging her through the bog and it just goes and it goes and I'm sitting there watching it and I was like uh, they're struggling so much for what f- I feel like I know is no reason and those sequences I found like horrifying and difficult to watch in the same way that setting a barn on fire and hearing screams felt uncomfortable to watch. So it, it yeah. felt like a lot of the time it just holds on to those moments way longer than it needs to to even have an impact. And as a result, that impact is then dialed up uh, significantly. Um, and, and you get that with those POV shots of someone looking yeah, directly at the camera and speaking things like i think the one of the first shots is the the mom telling fleora just kill us just kill us then you may as well kill us and that's like directly at the camera i was like Whew, okay yep i, I, I relived yeah, a little actually. bit of trauma with that moment i, I joke around i joked around with naf a poor joke knowing how the rest of this movie turns out but uh i was like i was like damn she scares me more than the germans at this present moment was when she's handing the axe to her son Mm. just saying kill us which also like does a great job of also explaining even if us uh, us at the audience going jesus christ okay like it's you it's have to train serious, your audience man. yeah like like we're thinking that we're yeah. like oh it's gonna be fine right like I like maybe not that... fine but it's like it's gonna like it's not gonna be that bad and then it's like as the film progresses we see now why she was so afraid and it's even like with the with the guy burning i just had a moment where i was like this to, what because naf you you had a great point of the director lets you sit mm-hmm. on these moments so when you get to the barn, I, I'm literally sitting here and I'm like, how the fuck did we even get there? Yeah. Because like, I'm just like, it's almost like it's this kind of vague blur of a movie. Yeah. That's like, it's just so linear that it feels like it kind of all blends together in a beautiful way. Like I, I that all of a sudden you're, you're just here. Mm. Like he, all, it's kind of in a similar way that we talked about like past lives where almost the editing is invisible yeah in this movie until you get to moments like the ending which i think is on purpose because it's like we've lulled you into this false sense of security and then the bam he shoots the portrait it's a it's a jump cut yeah it's like it's you know the point is that the director knows what they're doing and it's that moment of just as you sit there and you're listening it's also being like the burn victim that that village was attacked in the same way that we see mm. later on, but mm. we don't know that yet. We just get like that foreboding sense. Like, I don't know if I'm reading too far into it or things there, but that's what I felt. Mm. No, I think you're absolutely right. And I was thinking about that too, because I feel like particularly as the film starts and you got Fleura coming home real happy with his gun and he's ready to join the partisans. While we do um, kind of, we sort of know where it's going to go, you know, based on what our preconceived notions are going into the film. But in the same sense, we're looking at the mom kind of going, it's not that big a deal. Like, yeah, he's going to have a rough time of it, but like he's going to do what he needs to do, like chill. It's like he doesn't have to kill the toddlers, like stop. I think that that's yeah. also a little bit of what Fleora is experiencing there too. And that's a lot of what Chase was talking about, how like we're a participant in this film. Like in that sense, like we're almost an... Uh, he's almost an audience insert for us and he's reacting in the same way even when he looks over at the kids and winks at them and kind of like pretends and the mum comes back it's like dude 
it's not a joke. Like, this is serious. Like, this is serious things. Uh, I think that that almost is that wake-up moment for us as viewers within the film to go, hey, yeah, it does feel a little bit like much, doesn't it? But there's a reason for that, and I'm going to show you why. I think that that is, like you were saying as well, okay, like masterful direction. Masterful. Yeah, yeah, I think one thing, you know, you, like you said, and it's a great, great example of like, the, uh, they're not afraid to let things sit. But the other thing they're not afraid to do, which is consistent to the film is having scenes that essentially have no purpose. And it's mm -hmm. just like, when, when they like you said, with the bog of like, there's no need to go through this bog, his family is dead, he doesn't need to look for them on this other like inlet island. And then w the scene, or the, the, the sequence, I should say, with the the explosive mannequin dressed up as Hitler. Um, we don't really see like they we see them plant it, but we don't see that it took out anything. Um, it doesn't take out a tank. We don't, or at least we don't know. The only explosion we hear is they stepped on a mine. Mm -hmm. um, like the three partisans that went off with Flora to just, they, and they, they carried this thing and they're talking about how difficult it was to carry this thing, this huge explosive mannequin, um, and they put it into a crossroads and we see a, you know, a German vehicle go past it. We don't see anything happen with it. And then the, the two funny guys, right. The, yeah. the comic relief, the, the two minute <laughs> the, comic, the relief comic relief the film, um, they both step on a landmine and, you know, we just see a foot. Um, yeah. and then after, after that, um, the, the guy carrying it, the kind of like, semi commander of the of yeah. the squad is shot and yeah. it's just flora left and it's like what happened nothing that mm. all what of that do? that whole sequence is essentially for nothing um and i think you know there's a lot of moments in this film um where it's just like it's it's so funny to like hear discussions on the internet of like modern films like oh well like in this movie, this scene, nothing happened. And it's like, yeah, sometimes that's intentional. Like mm -hmm. sometimes people do things for no reason. And the, the failure uh, or the, like fu the futility of, of the scene is, is the point. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah. that this movie has a lot, a lot of that. Um, and it's just like, like, like him, him getting his gun, like pulling the gun out of the sand and struggling and the, only time he uses it is to shoot a poster and like that was yeah. such a big moment and it's just like he he doesn't he doesn't go out in a blaze of glory shooting down like 20 german soldiers he shoots a poster yeah that's all he does with it and and with that like as you're saying and and kind of kind of just to touch briefly on your point about modern filmmaking versus some people people's modern consumption of this stuff what i love about the direction and the whole production of this film is it very much is to the audience. Just wait. It is so sure of itself in the story that it's telling. Like this film does not waver. It does not break for better and for worse going like, again, like Nav, you were saying the bog scene stuck out to me too. I was like, this is filling me with dread. Why don't they just cut? Why don't they just cut, like relieve that tension? But they don't. And yeah. it's like, and then you and I'm wondering why. And at first I was going to be like, you know, I don't dig this. I'm not, I, I, I don't know. And then you get to the rest of the film and I'm like, I understand why you did that now. Mm -hmm. Like it's this long dread that, that honestly starts to make you think when you get to the bard scene, it's like, Oh, you think we we were going to cut away from a bog? So you think you we didn't do that then? Why do you think we're going to cut away now? Like it's just like it kind of like turns the tables on you, and goes, "No, this is the style. Mm. Can't deal with it. Like can't can't handle the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's that's what this film really asks of you, and even to the point of going thinking of like the whole thing going back in time and you know killing hitler and like what that would have done but also being like this is it. but also as a kid you get to the last shot there of it's a 
it, it, I don't, again, as you said, I, Chase, I don't know how they got this, but that moment of him shooting the picture and it's his eyes looking at like a picture of baby Adolf Hitler. And it's like, how mm. in this moment? It's like, it's like, I can't grapple with what the film is saying. Like, that's like, you're saying such a complex thing that I I don't know how to respond as a person. And that's why I was so excited that we got a chance to talk about it on the podcast. Because I'm like, I'm wrestling with God. I'm wrestling with shit, guys. I really yeah. need to talk about this. Uh, and I know that we want to talk more about some of the actual production elements of it. And Naf, obviously, you love scores. Scores is a huge thing to you. And this one is very subtle. Yeah. Uh, I think that, um, as Chase was saying earlier, we're really talking about how loud the film is. And I think uh, one of the big things for me is not just necessarily like the, the volume of noise, but like how constant noise is. There is always something in your ear. And even in those quiet moments, it's, you know, the overbearing sound of the um, like the creatures and the critters in the, the forests. Um, and particularly towards the end, as you start to have these moments that are like much heavier, you've got, you know, no real music behind it, but you have this low like drum of what feels like, you know, either like strings or woodwood instruments playing just really, really low chords that are just overbearing. And in any moment that you get a little bit of like like levity from like the cacophony of noise, that's kind of drowned out, and then it comes back to this, which is always always there. Um, I thought that that was really powerful, and then particularly the sound design in the moments after Fleora's uh, gets uh, like yeah, the bombs land in the forest. Post there, oh my god! Where, which also uh, Glash is like, fucking intense. Yeah, like, which I want to talk about a little bit of, of that as well in a sec. But like his, um, his reaction, and then like seeing the ear turn and and the blood's coming out of the ear, and Glash is like yelling at him, saying he's deaf and he you know and he did this and he did that. And he's he's deaf. He can't hear anything. Like oh my god! And it is quite like drowned out. And you know the subtitles are different in those moments as well. Like it, there isn't as much happening. We're almost again a bit of an insert for him. Uh, oh, sorry, he's a bit of an insert for us in that moment, which I thought was another really, really powerful uh, move. And like we said, that kind of you get that a lot through the film where, and particularly in, in like, what I end up flexing on my friends with is my little, like, setup for movies at home. You know, I have, like, a nice enough TV and I have, like, a really good sound setup. And, like, for those things, it makes films like this so much more... Um, difficult to watch because that you know cacophony of noises that he's probably hearing himself like that's coming from everywhere and it's constant and no matter how much you turn the volume down a little bit and try to adjust it's like it's there uh and so you really do feel the weight of that uh and it's brutal it's really really brutal um and the the sound design like we said in this film in general is insanely good and 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 you were talking about how they were using like live ammo and stuff too and that obviously goes to show like they don't it doesn't sound fake and um there's a scene i want to talk about when we get to like there's the sound portion of the effects and there's also how they've done like the special effects here like obviously there isn't really any cg in this film but there's a lot of explosions and otherwise which uh having watched it uh concern me uh for the safety yeah. of the of the crew and one cow uh but yeah, like, do you guys have uh, either one of you any thoughts on, but do you like the sound design for the film? Like, are there moments that stand out to you or go ahead, Jess. The, the most standout thing yeah, to me is, is the German reconnaissance plane that is essentially like almost the villain of the film. Yeah. yeah. Oh um, yeah. It is constant above him for like from the scene, essentially until he shoots Hitler. Yeah. Right. It is currently above him and it very purposely goes above him when he's like at like the most stressful. Moment. Uh, the way have that sound where it feels like part of this dreadful war, but it's just the and it has this like I can only describe it as like Hans Zimmer esque effect. It's just this like, yeah, you're awful right. Awful noise that is like terrible music and it 
and it is always around him yeah uh and it's just like it's just one of those things of it's just like it's this this little telling device where it's just like it it him alone it won't go away and it just it's set awful but in magnificent way of like when you just like look at it from like a storytelling movie making perspective it's just like this is so great but you're just like oh it's awful it's yeah. so awful it's so awful be, like in in the in the brilliance of that use of that character because i thought the same thing i was like there is a motif here that they keep using with this plane and and i i love that the the thing for me, Neff, was like, was like, uh, we'll probably talk about the barn scene as the whole wrapping up this thing. So I'll only go into it just a little bit. But from a technical way, the way that they overlapped things and almost like, because it reminded me, because as you were talking about, like from firsthand accounts, it kind of made me think of that, of mm-hmm. kind of similar to like when we were talking about with Schindler's List, when we talked about like the, the liquidating of the ghetto scene, you feel like a very comparable thing scenes to each other of this just feels like it's happening Mm -hmm. like i feel like i am watching this just happen and it's this kind of like and it feels like somebody said i remember they had this car with a loudspeaker and it's almost like the director just took these individual vignettes but didn't have like a narration telling you that he just cut to them Mm. Kind of even like you and you, Neff, you brought up a similar point with like the beach scene in Saving Private Ryan. It's like you're like, I can imagine some guy just saying, oh, yeah, I saw a guy walking around with his arm like, you know, mm. it, that's what the, that moment felt like. But I, the way that the how loud that film is, the fact that and I couldn't tell if it was just my audio setup. Uh, I don't have a fancy setup like Neff. Uh, and uh, I was that friend that he uh talks to about it and uh, you're gonna come and visit me and then then you'll be right you're right and but like the thing is that like the it felt like almost all of the noise the screams the fire the gunshots the breaking the music became like one track and like nothing was louder than the other yeah it just was all there it, it like literally at some point I thought this is overstimulation the movie <laughs> like that's that's what this is it's like yeah. this but yeah. like in a way of like I gotta Very give much. a compliment to it because I'm like you you really got that feeling of overstimulation yeah of like there's just too much for me to even pick a sound that's happening now and I, I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but that was that was at least when I was those are moments that really stuck out to me that. And then when they had the whole Hitler like gunshot moment was some of the best audio cutting yeah. ever. One of the big ones that stood out to me was also when um, uh, when he gets to like the, kind of the hiding spot for where all of his uh, town was and you've just got all the voices saying, and Chase, you were mentioning the scene before, it's one of the ones where he has to cover his ears because it's just too much going on and um, and everyone's coming past and they're just you know, giving him kisses on the head. They all know who this is and the subtitles won't do justice to what everyone's saying all the time, but one of the ones that cuts through clearly is, you know, they got your, they got your folks. They, they took your folks. Like, your folks are gone. Like, that's coming through clearly. But as you're watching the film, you're just hearing all these voices wail and yell and it is so, so painful to listen to in a way that I imagine um, obviously would have been for, for Flora there too to have to cover his his ears uh, from people who like love and care about him. Like, I can't listen to them anymore. That is uh, that is rough. And <laughs> That's rough, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was talking before about like one of the ones that really like there were two moments in the film that, that shook me in terms of the, uh, like the, the visual effects or like, you know, we're talking about explosions, guns, that kind of stuff. One of them is when they drop the bombs in the forest and Glacier and Flora are there. Those explosions are huge. Like they are huge explosions. And in this day and age, you wouldn't have an actor anywhere near that, let alone a child anywhere near that. But it's so abundantly clear that this was shot in camera and he was right there. And that alone is really horrifying. Do you guys know which scene I'm talking about? 
Yeah. Which one? Which it's, one was it again? So just after they do like the rain and stuff in the forest and everything's getting kind of normal and then um, Oh, the explosions there? The, like yeah, the air raid first explosion? Huge explosions oh, from yeah. The, the airdrop. Oh, that was terrifying. Yeah. That was horrifying. And I think <laughs> from, from the perspective of like within the film, yeah, and then also just in terms of like how the heck how the heck did you do this and not actually kill someone? Like it's it's right there. <laughs> Well, even yeah. knowing how the like the tracer rounds, like in the scene with the cow, that's the next scene I was going to mention. Uh, oh, like that one was like now knowing that that was all real because it felt real. Like yeah. seeing the like it just it was like I didn't know that they burned that red. Yeah. Like I didn't know that it actually kind of looks like Star Wars <laughs> a little. Like you know, like the red bolts. Like I didn't know that that actually is how. Because they did it a bit in Fury, too. And at first I was like, is that just so they can, like, is that kind of just a little bit of Hollywoodizing this? But then I see yeah. in this and I'm like, no, that seems like that's fucking about right. Yeah, and, exactly it. Oh, God. Um, and we were talking in the, the facts earlier as well, how, like, with using light ammunition, there's one scene in particular, um, which uh, I guess not so much spoiler warning, but, like, trigger warning because it's, like, animal abuse, I would say. Um, yeah, that's like true. A little bit ahead if you're listening to this. Uh, but, yeah, there's a scene where they, they take a cow and, like, I watched this cow kind of collapse and I was like, cows aren't that good actors. They're, like, I I kind of refuse to believe it. So they probably did kill the cow here. Like, what, like, how else, how else could you do this? And um, then, yeah, coming in and doing a bit of research for, like, the facts on the film at the start, it's, it's like, recognising that that's something that they actually did yeah like down to and if you've seen the film like there are shots where they're like directly at the cow's eye and you're watching like life leave this you know that that was when i was like is this yeah is this yeah. real but then again I <laughs> or also is watched, this some, um, like like i was either like this better be real or give this editor a medal yeah. like <laughs> And it's like that. Uh, I also watched Anatomy of a Fall earlier this year, which um, featured the best performance by a dog I'd ever seen. And I was thinking the same thing for a minute. And I was like, hold on. What have you done to this dog to make it this good at acting the way, based on what's happening in the scene? If you guys have seen the film Anatomy of a Fall, you'll know which scene I'm talking about. It very much stands out. But if you haven't, prepare yourself. It's uh, rough. I'll, I'll prepare myself. Uh. Yeah. The, the cow scene... So, uh, <laughs> I've been vegan for about 14 years, mm. uh, and because I had like mixed feelings. feelings ago. Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's such an interesting scene to me because like, like you were saying, it's either, it's either real or this is the best editing ever made, ever mm. done. And I think it's like, you know, we have to, do we have, we there is always a line that has to be drawn, but at the same time, when that law, when that line is crossed, it, it's something that I think is so interesting about the movie at, at large is yeah. it's so not Hollywood. It's just like when you watch something like, Oh brother, uh, where uh, they use the Tommy gun on the cow and like, it just gets red spots across or so, because obviously they didn't chow in yeah. a Hollywood film or when you watch something like saving private Ryan, or you watch just, you know, a John wick film and it's just, there's blood splatter and mm -hmm. just like everything is super over the top. And it's like, all you do is you see a ripple in the cow's flesh and you see it fall. See, that was, and, and see that was why I eye. thought it was fake was because I was like, Oh, well the cat, they're not actually shooting a cow. So like, I kind of missed it, you know, it's like, no, nope, uh, that it just went. And that's what's so like, it, it's just one of those things like w w before we started, we were talking about Andor, right? And how <laughs> it's just such, it's such good, like just, you know, media and it's, you know, it's, it's heralded as just being so real. And, you know, I, when, when we were at Celebration, we went to the Andor special effects uh, panel and that whole scene in the factory with the chains falling with Luthen and, and Cassie, yeah. like, that's real. They did yeah. that. And it's like you there is there's clearly a difference between seeing something on film that actually happened versus a special effect that represents what is supposed to be happening. And it's like 
this is a film, especially being made by someone whose family was affected by this. Yeah. And this being such a serious thing is it's like where that line for him is probably so much farther than any of us could possibly imagine. If it's just like, yeah, I don't care about your line. This is what happened. And I'm going to show it as best as I can and as accurately as I can. And it's like, if I lose a cow for this, to get it across like i get it and it's like the storytelling of that of like he refuses to believe that the cow's dead because he has to feed a village with that cow mm. and the cow just got shot and like his other two comrades just got blown up by a mine the guy who was going to lead him back to the village just got shot by the same hail of bullets as the cow did and it's just like and then that leads into that that leads into the barn scene where he's trying to steal uh, the horse because he's like I need a, I need a hatchet I have to cut up a cow and he's just so focused on with this bucket that he was going to milk a cow with and she's like he's like none of this is going to happen yeah. it's not happening yeah um, it's just him being in shock you know like yeah. it's that full on he he just doesn't know what he's doing because it's like yeah, yeah what you're going to bring it's that shock of like, like I got in a car crash when I was like, uh, I, I, like uh, younger and it was like a pretty bad car crash. And it's like, when you get out of it, you still, for some reason, I'm like, the airbags have gone off, but I can still drive this to where I was going. Right. Like your brain is like, yeah, it's not that bad. Hmm. Like it's a, just a very similar situation. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I got rear ended very badly by a guy like just speeding i was at a red light and the dude just slammed into me and like i get out of the car and i'm like oh my god my suspension's on the road i need to grab that and it's like you're like no yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, like, fucked. That's not, you're done it's like no man that's not that's not what's happening here yeah and uh and like and now to your point like one thing i wanted to bring up uh was you know another element that i i didn't even think of until this film was the makeup that they did on this, on this, on, on the kid. Yeah. Like you, you always see those famous uh, before and after photos of presidents, right? Yeah. Like they go in with kind of a little bit of a youthful glow and they come out with wrinkles down to the bone and like graying hair, just showing like the stress that the job like entails. Mm hmm. And, and I had never thought, like, I, I don't know. It's one of those things that's, like, you don't think about until you see it. And you're like, duh, that would happen. Why the fuck wouldn't? And, like, as the movie goes on and you see him become more wrinkled and wrinkled. And it's such, I think it's because it's on a child yeah, that you notice it more. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. my God. This poor kid has gone through so much trauma. And then you have like the famous shot of like, you know, the, the Nazi pushing him forward and like turning the head and like, and, and you, he, him staring at us. And it's like, uh, it's like, we're supposed to save him. Like yeah. that's, that's yeah. what it feels like. It's like, it's like, cause especially if you don't know the story and you're going, it's like, is this how this, it's one of those movies. This is how this movie can end. Yeah. Is, he gets a picture taken and a bullet to the brain. Like that's how this movie yep. could end. Uh, uh, and it's just uh, like, it's, uh, and he's just looking at you. His lips are split open from being chapped and his eyes are sunken in. And like, I mean, I have to give like the ultimate kudos to Alexi. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but his performance oh my God. in this film was just, it's just, it's unforgettable. It's, horrifying it's haunting and he's just does such an incredible job um and most of the people in this film were not actors they are just people from belarus um that again their families probably lived through this stuff um which is why so, it feels so authentic absolutely yeah. yeah it does um he said it goes to show a lot of that too especially like uh, one of the other things that stood out was uh, post the barn scene where they bring the, the grandma out on her bed and then it's like, ah, we're just going to leave you here for breeding. And I was like, and then she's just kind of like looking at them and like smiling and like in my thought, uh, watching that scene, I'm sure that potentially there's different ways to interpret it as well, but like 
I, I couldn't tell if the Germans, were, I'm assuming the Germans were speaking in German and she obviously can't understand them. And for a moment I was like, did she feel like grateful that they saved her? Cause she's like so happy for a minute and it kind of like changes at the mm. end. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't quite know what I'm looking at here. I just know that it's, I'm uncomfortable. I'm still uncomfortable. And that's obviously followed up by um, what it, it appears to be Glasha comes back um, at the end of the film. I'm not sure if it, if it actually is her or not, because, again, same sort of scenario of what's it's happened Glasha. to... Okay, cool. That, that, was, that, that, was, so that was that was what we, we... We both had the same... Like, we both were like... At the same time, we were like... We think that that's her. Yeah. But yeah. we also don't want it to be her. So we're like, please let it be another character. Like, please... <laughs> Oh my god, that like that that image fucking horrifying. Yeah. I think there's a lot of those moments too where uh it's something that you don't want to see or don't want to look at and again the director's hanging on those scenes for quite a long time. You know, you've got that moment where she's almost she's on this side of the screen just just hanging out and she looks horrifying like, you know, like she's all beaten up and bleeding and like it is not a, it's not nice to look at at all and then he's in the background just looking around and just it's just utter destruction of individuals of their um like you know their lives and everything being destroyed there but also like of them themselves you know like i think that the what you see externally is very indicative of obviously what's gonna be happening internally too and it is no doubt that mm, this isn't something you necessarily recover from ever Oh yeah. Just like watching the film, yeah, I'm never gonna the, recover from it. The scene, the yeah, the yeah. the final <laughs> scene with Glasha, and it's it's something we, I've seen a lot on social media of people saying show don't tell, show don't tell, and I think a lot of people misuse the phrase, um, where like people will use like dialogue exposition. Well, they should show but not tell. I'm like, well, you can certainly use dialogue in a film to convey like, oh yeah, something that has happened. Yeah. Um, but I think what Come and See does that f- almost no films do, or at least do it to the. God, you don't want to say the success <laughs> of it, but it the, is the, an incredibly it's a brilliance of the craft. Where you like don't the see a lot of, of violent things happening. You don't see what happens to Glasha. You just see what happened. Uh, you just yeah. see her waddling with blood running down her legs. And they don't need to say anything. Flora doesn't say what happened. What What's going on? Why is like you as soon as you see her you know exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's the same when they when they throw the woman into the into the truck mm-hmm. um and it's you still have the cacophony of sound of the fires blazing the end like all the the convoy of the german trucks going and you hear screams mm. um and i think with and maybe this is the transition point to the barn um is you don't really once once floor is out of the barn you see one man get shot trying to escape and you see a child get ragged doll through the window um that that but, that was such an impactful moment right there of just a simple tossing it back just, in there and, it, and he, he cartwheels through the window but what what is so and especially watching it again is again i'll, I'll say like just the unhollywood this movie is because we see so many movies where it's just like you throw a grenade and it explodes and the whole building comes down or you, someone throws a Molotov cocktail and the world's largest fire ignites. And with this scene, it's relentless. It doesn't stop. And it's not, it's like, it starts like you, when they get pushed in, you, you know, you get that Schindler's list and yeah. the pianist feel of like, up oh, here we go. This yeah. is going to be bad. And you don't know how bad it's about to be <laughs> because it's like, okay, here we go. This is going to, this is going to be rough. And like, you, you know, what's coming, but like, again, you don't know what's coming mm. and it's, it starts with the grenades and it's again, it's not one grenade. It's, a half a dozen to a dozen mm. and then the molotov cocktails and again it's not one and a lot of these molotov cocktails they don't 
Like they don't all just like set the thing on fire immediately. It's just a slow build up of burn. Uh, and then they open fire on it and then they bring in the flamethrowers and it's just like, and you don't see a single person in this. Yeah. All you hear are screams. Mm. You don't see, you don't need to a single person. Yeah. yeah. You, you, uh, you don't want your to. imagination is doing far worse. Yeah. Like that. And I mean, they always, as you said, Chase, like the, you, you have the Hollywood Hollywoodization of this stuff and people often will say that like your mind can do far worse to you than it, than you know mm. what you what is shown to you and this is like what that phrase is made for because as you said there is not there's not blood in this mm. there's not a moment of like you have a little bit of a spurt when the guy gets shot in the in yeah, the bar it's like it's like droplets come out it's but, not it's not this but like it's not the hollywood <laughs> blood gush kill bill moment yeah, it's 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 this moment there of just like this little spritz, and then you see with this, like you see this moment of just the ferocity, and it's also just the cavalier attitude mm. of the soldiers that make you go, how how can you get this far gone? Yeah. Like to me, I'm like looking at that. I'm like, how how do you as a person live with yourself? Like that's what I did think was kind of interesting with the under the bridge scene was the fact that some soldiers were like they made us do it. Like at first, I'm like, okay, still fuck you. Like you know, yeah. like I don't care if they made you do it. Like you did it. Like yeah, like they made you do it, and I'm gonna make you pay with them. Like mm-hmm. you know, like sort of a thing there. But at the same time. I look at that. I'm just like, how do you not stop for a minute and think? Mm -hmm. Propaganda. Should I be doing this? You know, like, like I don't know. It's just so, like, I I can't even begin to imagine being okay with that. Yeah, I completely understand what you're saying there too, and it's like, um, I think that it's exemplified in when it's revealed that that uh, the guy at the end was the, the same SS officer. Um, as Chase was saying, when he doesn't let up at all and still says, yep, this is what I think of you. You guys aren't, you're not real people, essentially. You know, like, like that's how they're brought up to view this. And so, of course, it's like, well, yeah, if I'm wiping out, like, vermin, like, I'll, I'll set a mousetrap, you know? Like, it, it just, this is all we're doing. We're just, we're, we're cleaning or cleansing. It, like, it is, it's usually how things go um in conflicts like this you know like it, there isn't really a yep. uh a way you to have to dehumanize like you unless you've you can't yeah, do anyway. this without exact you I, this is why i love you you finished exactly what i was gonna say yeah uh, and, 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 and that's uh, oh go ahead go ahead finish yeah, your point so uh i think that particularly like when you get to that scene one of the other things that i thought uh was really interesting was there was a guy who's driving away um We've got a fourth guest. <laughs> um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, uh, I, I saw as there was a guy who was driving away. There's these little spurts of like um, what, what seemed like essentially like napalm just landing behind him. And it's actually like this really beautiful shot of this guy driving away. And as he's driving away, the fire's landing and the smoke's coming up and it's almost transitioning you to the next scene. And I'm sitting there at the moment that I'm like, obviously what we're visualizing isn't something that's beautiful in any means but to still actually have a shot that's so perfectly framed like that in that moment i was like i was paused for a second i was like hold on this is wild and as you get to the end it also starts cutting in uh footage of like the real atrocities that uh, you know, from from that kind of like the historical. Did not care for that. Uh, and <laughs> it's it's rough. You know, like we've seen it a lot of the times through school. Obviously, we've studied studied these kinds of things, and there's been documentaries and all that. So like, it's all like nothing that I saw that was like new to me, but in the moment, uh, still, still shocking. It's still that reminder. It's context. Of, like, this is a thing that happened. Like it's it's just it's a thing that happened. It, it isn't. Um, uh, it isn't something that's that's made up, and like we said, obviously, though, though the story isn't necessarily based on a true story, it's based on accounts from people that experienced this, that they've gone and said, "This is what happened, and this is what happened, and this is what happened," and somebody's gone and been able to turn that into a, a story. And it is, yeah, it's 
definitely it's a story. It, it, towards the end. Yeah, it, it was one of the <laughs> roughest things that I'd watched. And and thinking about how Kay was saying earlier that people often come to conversations around like you know sharing art or media of this is the best thing I've ever seen or this is the most brutal thing I've ever seen or all those kinds of feelings. As I was watching the film at the start, I kind of was like, this isn't actually that bad. Like this is very in line with what I've seen before and around about what I expected. And even towards the end, like what I'm seeing on screen is like. I'm not seeing things that I haven't necessarily seen before, but like the sense of like dread that it brings up within me as I watch it is just like so many times, like as, as Kay was saying, like I finished watching the movie this morning uh, and I was ahead of Kay when I started this morning and he was behind me and I'd taken breaks in between to just kind of like decompress for a minute. And in the end, I ended up finishing the movie like half an hour later than he did. So like it, it, it's impactful and it's like like you said like while a barn on fire isn't necessarily something you haven't seen before the way that it's presented uh in this film particularly together with the sound effects and the fact that everything up until now has looked and felt so real um it's horrifying it feels like that you're actually watching people die in a barn it does feel like yeah. that 100%. Well, and, and it makes it hard to suspend is- disbelief well, and in, in going with that, Naf, like the, the thing this film does incredibly well is at the same time that it does that, it, a lot of its storytelling is visual. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like the dialogue is there, but the dialogue is not the story. The story is very visually told. Yeah. The the dialogue is a lot of nice window dressing to the to the movie Mm. but the story is through his eyes and thus the camera is really taking us through what you're seeing is the story and one of the things that really i think builds that sense of dread is when your brain starts to pick up on the inconsistencies of things that are happening where Mm. you're like oh go towards the barn oh yeah everybody go into the barn and your brain is like that's not gonna what that no that's not no they can't be this entire village Mm -hmm. like you you start your brain almost just trying to talk you out of what what you know is going to happen yeah like in your heart of hearts you know what's going to happen yeah but at the same time you're like but it can't no like did like i literally had to look up as that scene was happening did this happen Mm -hmm. because i because it's that moment it's like it's war i'm sure it did but it's that moment of when you realize and people are like nah this was one of the most historically accurate films it filled me with even more pain yeah because you're like that's probably not even a fraction Hmm. of the feeling yeah Yeah, of what like and, and if and if this is it's this bad on a fake scale that I'm sitting here comforting underneath a couple of covers just watching this. If that, if I'm feeling this bad over a fake thing, what the fuck was the real thing like? Yeah. And you're like, I don't know. To me, I find that to be just such a very, and and I guess going to kind of a closing point is talking about that, rounding it back to at least how we kind of started this off. Should this be made? Mm. Should films like this, because as you said, this is not a film for everybody. Yeah. This is not a film I will readily recommend to people in a sense of this is a very particular type of film for a very particular type of of people who are interested in this kind of thing. But it's one of those things that like it was was always the same thing with Schindler's List for me, Mm -hmm. where I was like this Schindler's List still is one of the best films I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as you said, like Chase, there's a difference with that film because that film gives you a sense of a little bit of even amidst this horror, there's a little bit of hope. There's a little bit of hope mm-hmm. that somebody did something. Mm-hmm. It wasn't everything. It didn't save everybody. It didn't stop the Holocaust, but it did save people. Yeah. And there is a beautiful craftsmanship to that film that it does bring but we do need films like this too. Yeah. That are the the all quiet on the western fronts. The <laughs> you know the things there of going no. This is the cost of war. Yeah. Pure and simple. This is what happens Naf, as you says when you dehumanize people. <laughs> it makes it easy for you to shove them in a barn, 
and light it on fire. Yeah. Like it, it's it's that thing of reminding you this is how ugly we can be to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, my answer to that question is, yes, this needs to yeah. be made. We can debate how ethically the production is of shooting bullets over your actors. That I'm like, OK, real. realism. I'm glad See, nobody died. On one hand, you've got uh, don't <laughs> tell Hans when you're going to drop him. So you get a realistic response. And on the other one, you have shoot a cow next to a child. Like these are. <laughs> you know, it's both ends that we've got yeah. There. And and, well, yeah. and it's it, it's one of those things, you know, you can't go back in time and you have the butterfly effect, right? But it's like, if they didn't, would it have been different? Mm. You know? Yeah, you're right. If and, and it's one of those things, if it's just like, what's, like I said earlier, like, what's the line? And, you know, if we go back and, and look at other films, like these, you know, I'll just say edgy, disturbing movies. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, um, should should those lines be crossed and i think there's more of an argument there for your serbian films and your uh the human centipedes uh, things yeah, like that like it's yeah. like okay you know like what wh where's the line there are you crossing the line um and i think a lot of those films are very self-aware and what they're doing and it's like we're just trying to gross people out like you know that's the goal who yeah who cares what someone on the internet says about how yeah. we make films uh but then you do have your August undergrounds, which is, it's like, okay, this is too real. How real did you guys go to make this? Uh, and, you know, we'll never know. These are like, we're talking like $10,000 budget films that circulate yeah. around the internet. But then when you have someone who, you know, very much was impacted by this and you have that like splash screen at the end. It's like, I, I forget the exact number, but it's like 682 Belarusian villages yeah. suffered this, the same fate you just witnessed. And it's like, that's like almost immeasurable. It's like kind of like the idea of like the atomic bomb yeah. is you, you, you will never know how big and powerful those are. We can, we can only say, Oh, this was a thousand times more powerful than TNT or this one's 10,000 times more powerful. But than none of us can really numbers understand numbers. That. And then when you see this one village go through this and you're just like, this was so relentless. This was so rough to watch and like, okay, go through this, you know, 600 half, you more know, times, 600 plus more times. Hmm. Um, like this is the uh, shit that you're like you would think are held up as a how the fuck did this one thing happen and then uh but like but the fact that it happened 600 more times it's like at that point even the individual village names feel like yeah. you can't say it's a columbine a hiroshima you can't even yeah. identify it like yeah. that's just how many there are and it's like mm -hmm. it's it's insane to me of yeah. and that's what I, I think that you're right like and I think that there are times when that line needs to be crossed and I, yeah. I think that I and I can't tell you where that line is necessarily I, I always believe it it involves the actor safety it involves the, the the crew people safety like for me I, mm -hmm. I I abhor people like Stanley Kubrick who will like torture their actors basically on set I think mm -hmm. that no one should lose life for art um but it, maybe it maybe a cow did need to lend its life <laughs> to a, a great piece of, like like all yeah. joking is up but all joking aside it, it it really does feel like this film the risk that it took i'm glad that nothing horrible happened or else we yeah. would be really having a different discussion right uh but since it didn't I do feel that it, it's like the, the steps you took to make this movie as impactful as it was is brilliant. Yeah. It paid off. Like it really, really <laughs> did pay off. And it, it's like, it's like you can't argue with the result, you know, it's, you can. Things. it's just like, yeah, you may not agree with how I made this movie, but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have turned out the way it did if I didn't do it that way. And to me, kind of like if we touch on that, like anti-war thing and it's like, there's a really interesting, uh, I forget who wrote it, but there's a great essay of like the, the impossibility of making an anti-war film 
while featuring war mm-hmm. um like you're you're somehow glorifying it there there is a hero no matter how nuanced that hero may be there is there's that uh, there is that and you kind of get that with flora he continues marching on yeah. you know after everything he's seen he doesn't run away he doesn't he doesn't try and start a life you know somewhere else he picks up that gun and he marches mm-hmm. uh and then we hear mozart's score behind that and you're just like i just you'll never like we talked about you'll never hear that score again the same way nope. um yeah but like you guys watched saving private ryan two two weeks ago and it's so funny because like after i had watched this with with my roommates um sometime later we're like oh let's watch saving private ryan we couldn't get through saving private ryan after watching mm. this it was so like heavy-handed american propaganda the u.s army saved the day like it was it's like when they when they do this scene and it's like a like on paper visually cool scene of the sniper going through the lens of the german sniper yeah and then like the context of like even even with the bridge scene come and see you're like th- those were two 12 people that were that had bullets go through them yeah. uh and in saving private ryan fails in like my opinion just like do, making having that impact because it is so set on being cool in, in its storytelling and, and just this kind of like Tom Hanks with the pistol shooting the tank and then the the bomber comes and blows up the tank and it's like a, a hell yeah America moment and it's just like for me that movie became hard to watch because it mm. it wasn't reflecting what was really going on yeah. um, and it just it just feels so heavy handed propaganda at that point mm. see, um, see for me like it's, just, it's like yeah I hear I hear you in that regard, and I was very curious to have this discussion. Um, like, Saving Private Ryan is one of still one of my favorite films of all time, um, and I don't disagree with you. That we we had an interesting discussion on that episode where we were talking about is Saving Private Ryan a pro war film or like a and I and what what we kind of landed on was I think it's an anti war film but pro America, and and I'm like I think that that's Fair. that's that's the thing because when you look at the film. The film, one of the, my favorite scenes in that film was portraying a different kind of horror that's in a different sense was when they're writing all the letters to the to the families, telling how their sons died heroically in battle at this encampment. They died on a fucking beach in the first wave. Like yeah. that's that like the, a, a gate we as an audience and a bullet went through their head. Like, like that's, that's the that's they, they pulled off a helmet and they got shot in the head. Like <laughs> that is how your son died. But I can't tell you that. So I'm gonna lie to you and tell you that it was like a very important operation, that it was very much there. And then I'm gonna and then Spielberg being like, and then I'm gonna make you watch a mother find out that three of her sons are dead. And I think and I think it's a different nuance. Spielberg, I think, cared a lot about showing the toll it took on the American soldiers. But I felt that at the same time, it's no all quiet on the Western front. It's no come and see. Yeah. But I think that it's because it had a different goal. Mm-hmm. It, I put more come and see in the same category as something like Schindler's List, where the yeah. goal of this was to show the brutality and the things there. What Saving Private Ryan was, was kind of the story of veterans in there but the, these battles were not the Belarus battles. Mm. These, it's part of the war was not that. Yeah, and it's and 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 to me, I'm like, I don't. That's why I don't like hold same private Ryan at fault for that. While your points impe- impeccably made, and I agree, because you look at something like this, and I'm like, I think this is more truthful and honest to mm-hmm. war. And I would say this is a better anti-war film than Saving Private Ryan. Easy. Easy. But I do think that it's like I think Saving Private Ryan is often looked at in a different light, maybe because of its John Williams score or those things there that we tend to think of the heroic thing. 
it, it, the the one thing and it's kind of like it, it's like when you watch something like full metal jacket apocalypse now where like or did those movies have their shortcomings yes um but those those movies i think do have that like like in, in full metal jacket when they're at the very end when they're standing over the girl the the, ch- the child yeah. yep that was like killing them all and they're just like there is not that moment in, in something like Saving Private Ryan or American Sniper or like any of yeah. these more modern, like the, the, like mm. the much more egregious examples of like, for sure. hell yeah, for sure. hell yeah, wars about shit. Yeah. It guns, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, you're absolutely and, right. Um, it, it's, it's, there's just, to me, like, what, like, yeah, it was so interesting going back to Saving Private Ryan and maybe it's one of those things like, like if you watch it again after watching come and see you're just like oof. i mean for sure yeah, like I, cool. I i remember watching yeah. it even post a lot of like my own political views and stuff changing and being like mm-hmm. yeah there's still some stuff here that i'm not i'm not as huge a fan of but because yeah. i feel like i know spielberg's position on a lot of other shit yeah i think that there, there's an interesting thing I mean, there schindler's list exactly so but closing with this obviously this is a brilliant film uh kind of closing remarks with things there um i know at least for myself this was one of the most powerful films i've ever seen uh so much so that it's in a special category of i only recommend this to a few people that i would be like now you can handle this and yeah like reserve a day and yeah check this out but Naf, I'm I'm like final thoughts on the film. I'm curious what you felt with this whole thing. Yeah, well, very very similar too. And I was thinking on that that last point too on sort of should this be made and and how uh, those films have kind of evolved through time. And there's there's two films that are on uh, my watch list that were released last year that uh, I might recommend to viewers as well potentially for the same sort of reasons. But uh, there's one uh, I'm not sure if you guys may have heard of it, but it's called Twenty Days in Mariupol. Did you hear about that film? No. So this is a documentary that came out last year, um, and it's a news crew that went into Mariupol, which is during the Russia and... Um, and oh. Uh, oh. Sorry, I forget the... Ukraine. Uh, the Ukraine. Ukraine. Yep, so, so the Russia and Ukraine, um, like, war, uh, and they got stranded. They went into like, kind of raise awareness and get, like, footage, and they got stranded, and then so they filmed everything anyway. Uh, they were stuck there for 20 days, and then they released a documentary um, yeah, a few months ago as well that, that hasn't come out in, in Australia just yet. But uh, that's something that I really want to check out because it is, you know, it's again, it's showing the reality of, of what's happening there. Uh, and the other one is a film called The Zone of Interest, which I told you about, Kay. Um, which is yeah, essentially that like, I really want to check out. Well, it is a, a fictional story. Uh, the concept is that one of the, uh, like, head people that is... Uh, 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 like leading Auschwitz, they they set up a house just off site, and they're just trying to live a, a, a normal life while you can still kind of hear everything that's happening at the camp in the background. So it's being hailed as having again some of the best sound design and most realistic uh, sound design for what would have been happening in that space. And it's one that I want to check out. I don't know much about it, so again, like just uh, things that came out this year that might fall under the same category as this. To, to potentially we should do check a out. blind um, date with that film because uh, I, I really want to watch that movie too. We should do a blind date with that. Yeah, yeah, I'd be down. Um, yeah, so like again things like this continue to be made but uh, obviously it, it's evolved over time too like this is the the reality of war film exists and again you know, you've always quiet in the rest of, in, on the western front a couple of years ago too that are still trying to you know entertain and at the same time like teach or showcase something that needs to be seen because i think that the the question for me is less should this be made and more does this need to be seen and I think that it, it does. Like, it's very, very valuable information for us to have as humans, particularly as older generations are, you know, kind of disappearing and we're being replaced by new yeah. generations. Like, if you don't continue to tell these stories, you're going to continue to fall into the same uh, traps, the same... We're going to make the same mistakes. Uh, so I very much think this is a film that, that needs to be seen and, and more films like this needs to be seen and again with the other stuff that's going on in the world right now i can imagine that we're going to start seeing a lot more of this too over the next few years because again you've got things that are happening that we're not aware of that uh some people try to like minimize it's not a bigger deal as it actually is and um you've got conflicting like voices there uh for what is something that's very real and happening and affecting people's lives and i think that in any way we can raising awareness to that kind of stuff is, is important 
Absolutely. And Chase, final thoughts on the film. Obviously, they're kind of wrapping up your wonderful recommendation. Yeah, I mean, it's it is a it is such a powerful film, like you said. It is it is so unconventional and just it's heartbreaking, haunting, yeah. harrowing, everything, every every one of those like negative emotions you can kind of get through. Um, I would I would maybe counter and I would say I think everyone should give this movie a shot. Mm. Um, For sure. Yeah. Like turn it off when you're ready to turn it off. Like don't 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 kill yourself trying to watch this. But it's just one of those things like, you know, it's it's good to step out of your comfort zone, especially especially when this is you know well is it a true story no but it is based on firsthand yeah. accounts you can learn um, something like it's one of those things like I'll, I'll go back to a serbian film like do you need to watch a serbian film no if you want to watch some weird fucked up fiction sure go watch it hmm. um this one is a little more important um i think for a lot of people to to get some grasp and some understanding of what was what was happening yeah. not that long ago mm. um and if i were to recommend anything i've kind of got like a bundle of things um i'd say like if you want more super accurate stuff um about history and more modern hbo's chernobyl is phenomenal you stole um, my one so well, uh, like oh, I guess let's introduce this segment real quick. You're you're all good. Okay. I love I love it. And you picked that's very funny it's that, that choice, you yeah. literally stole exactly what Naf was thinking. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we're so obviously one of the segments we love to do here on What with the Films is Cinema a la Carte, where each of us pick two to three different media, whether it's uh, you know, video game, uh, TV show, movie that we think that you would if you haven't checked it out, but you like this one, similar to your Amazon like uh your Amazon shopping list, if you like this, you might also like this. Yeah. And uh we try to go with something that might be a little bit close to home and then sometimes an out of the box pick. And so obviously uh, starting off Chase, you have Chernobyl as your pick uh as uh one of the things there. What else? Um, I think if, if, if you think that come and see is going to be too much, but you do want to get kind of a, a sense and vibe of that, you know, I think Schindler's list is a great one, but I think Roman Polanski's the pianist is Ooh, okay. a, another like, um, brilliant film. It does a lot of similar things to come and see where it's, it's brutal in some ways, but it's just the implication of the brutality in the yeah. pianist for a lot of it. Um, and, and I think that's that's another really important one. Um, two documentaries to watch um, would be White Light, Black Rain, which is the perspective of the the ends of Hiroshima during the bombings. Okay, um, that's wow. really hard to get through, uh, and even harder to get through is the BBC Auschwitz six hour documentary. Um, it's broken up into episodic. Um, like each each episode is an hour. It was on like Netflix, or would, would you have to like rent those? Um, it was on Netflix at one point, and if you just look up BBC Auschwitz, it's, sure, I'm sure that you can find it. It's mm. it's a lot of firsthand testimonies. It's um, they do interview. Uh, I, I'd say like you know, content warning. It's really it's really it's what it is. But the extra content warning is they interview Nazi officers that mm. were. Oh shit! Um, yeah. Um, and it's hard. Those interviews are hard to watch. Um, and I guess to lighten up the mood, if you just want fucked up shit with unethical <laughs> filmmaking, go watch Cannibal Holocaust. If you want to see <laughs> animals die on screen, okay. um, Damn. it's that's a that's another rough one. But it is like yeah. a, a film for the sake of entertainment. It, there's no good story there. It's just like it's a shock factor film. Wow. It has very interesting behind the scenes uh the director was arrested um so no brilliant. shit i'll tell you yeah, it's a good film. so if you went arrested then yeah it's not a good film but it's one of those like if you're if you're, if you're trying to check <laughs> off the fucked up movies to watch it's it's up there it's yeah. certainly yeah. on there wow, wow. yeah it's amazing. um the old but fantastic you know choices, not yeah. you know yeah but like in all in all reality like please it's free on YouTube. Come and see is free mm. on YouTube. Definitely um, go and check it out, guys. Yeah, we'll it's, put a, it's we'll put a link starting. down in the bio as well with it. Uh, just with like a, the about on the page yeah. there. We'll try to put it there. Uh, but Nav, 
Hit us with your cinema a la carte, or do you want me to go because you need to think of something no, to replace Chernobyl? Uh, yeah, no, it's well, I mean, Chernobyl, I'm still going to talk to him for that, that reason. I think that, that why Chernobyl is a really um, like great choice is that it spends less time focusing on the event itself and more on the aftermath and like what it actually does to real people, and particularly when you talk about like makeup and special effects and those kinds of things. Very similar here, obviously, with another, what, 60-ish years, 60-plus years of... Um, of improving that craft so like visually it is very very uh brutal and the other one we talked about a couple of times here but um i haven't seen the original film but i did see the remake uh, a couple of years ago of all quiet on the western front and i think that that's another one that just again you all are almost an insert uh for our main character and just watching these atrocities happen and watching them slowly go from you know like oh my god i'm so excited to go to war to i can't believe what this really is um, and yes, yeah, so the two really easy choices, really simple choices, and, and that, that, those are my picks. Uh, and for my picks, uh, you did steal All Quiet on the Western Front from me because I, I was uh, that. Just that's show, all both, of our brains both, work very similarly. Yeah, the the, the original film is one of my favorite films of all time and mm-hmm. uh the sequel I th- or i'm sorry the remake was very very good i love that it was in german and that it actually yeah. had all of that uh very powerful very akin to this mm-hmm. uh i i a uh, couple of the ones that i have recommended we brought up a little bit in this um one of mine is uh schindler's list uh shouldn't be a surprise yeah uh mainly because i think when we're talking about films uh i always said if there was one film uh that i could I, I often will say that I think film isn't necessary to sustain life. I don't think it is. I don't think any film is necessary to see in life. Schindler's List is the first one that I would say was the first one for me that I was like, I think if you only saw one film in your life, watch this movie. Because I think that it it, it, it has so much to say about us as human <laughs> beings in a similar way to come and see. And I think that if you felt that same way about come and see, but you haven't seen Schindler's list, please check it out because it is an unflinching, yeah, un- unflinching film ab- about that subject yeah. matter. And then you guys um, can also check out our episode on uh, Schindler's list afterwards. Absolutely. We did one on that. Yeah. That was our else, first uh, episode uh, that we did there. Yeah. What but, else did uh, you kick it off? <laughs> we, oh, oh, yeah! Like it was what it was one of our early ones to kick off a uh, Nap Spielbergification, yeah. and uh, it was a randomly picked thing, and then we yeah. both regretted p- deciding to do this at random. But um, my other ones are uh, to round it out. One was a there are two. One I haven't seen, but my wife was talking about uh, this film as a very powerful Italian film. Um, the, uh, it's. It's not the one with Brendan Fraser, but it is also called The Whale. Uh, And that film is a very brutal watch about the Holocaust uh, told from the standpoint of a child in one of the camps. Hmm. So it is uh, she says that they in Italy, they had to watch it in grade school and uh, they uh, traumatized her ever since. So if you're looking for something akin to that, I'll probably be watching that at some point to get a vibe on that. But uh that's there. Another Italian film, if you're looking for something a little lighter, but still deals with the subject matter in a very ultimately serious way, hmm. is Life is Beautiful. Uh, Life is Beautiful is incredible film uh, where a father and son are put into uh, one of the death camps, I believe Auschwitz. Uh, hmm. And the thing is that the father has to keep his son's innocence alive and so while dealing with the atrocities around him has to make his son believe it's still a game yeah wow and it's it's a incredibly powerful story done with while it is funny it 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 does that like jojo rabbit is a more extreme version of this but it's in a similar wavelength yeah. uh but cool. uh let me make sure i i have one more i think uh just double checking here uh yes um the other one that i i, I wanted to recommend as a great pairing with this film was apocalypse now 
because if you kind of have a moment of uh, even though I'm not a huge fan of the movie as a whole, the thing about Apocalypse Now is if you really dug how Come and See kind of is a what was the point mm. kind of movie. You can't really get more than Apocalypse Now, a film that as you go further and further along in it, you feel like almost you feel like you've lost yourself. Wow. Yeah. Amidst this whole thing. Uh, And it's an incredible film. And then the last one I wanted to do was uh, in. going off of chase chases uh if you just want a fucked up film that uh i'll recommend to you the best film that i'll never see again is uh killing of a sacred deer uh yargos lathamos uh film with barry keoghan uh and um uh that was the first time i saw him uh and he plays the villain in that movie and he's fucking terrifying Mm. and if you want to know why he's going to make a great joker Watch that film. And uh, oh, it's anyway, on my list. It's so, on my list. Absolutely. Well, that's that's it, guys. Uh, Chase, where can we find you on the webs? You can always find me on TikTok and also on Twitch at Forward Into the Black. Ooh. Uh, what can people expect to find from you if they go and find you? Oh, I mean, it's so funny. Uh, I mostly make Star Wars content. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't make a uh, World Wars. War II yeah. content. I don't. I don't um, do that. Star I, Wars and we have, I Earth have Wars. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> just wars. Those, those damn Earth Wars. <laughs> those damn um, Earth Wars. You no, know, I. I uh, I've definitely delved into talking about like movies that I like. Um, you know, I went through the Saw series. Um, you know kind of in halloween um on twitch i usually play like space simulator so like star citizen cool. elite dangerous yeah. starfield stuff like that so awesome. uh, that's usually what i do cool well, beautiful yeah, thank you so much for joining us today as well like it was a pleasure to have you and to bring this film and to be able to talk about it um well, for, this was great thank you guys yeah no worries man and and um we'd obviously love to have you back for another film at some point as well maybe oh, just, absolutely like, give me some time to recover <laughs> before you put me on to something, <laughs> something <laughs> there's a movie i haven't seen mm. that we should watch we could all we watch. should watch yeah we should watch stalker all right. Ooh, uh, cool. I've heard I've heard good things, and I would love to yeah. I would love to watch that as well. Sounds awesome. Let's let's do it. Um, so you guys can find me at On Second Thought, uh, essentially anywhere, and you'll find me talking uh, g- generally uh, uh, film, TV, and a whole lot of Star Wars. Um, yeah, and uh, you can also find uh, one with the films uh, essentially anywhere you find your social medias. We're on on Twitter, on Instagram, um, on TikTok, all of those main things, and obviously on YouTube too. And you can find the episodes uh, available to stream on anywhere you get your podcasts afterwards, which is pretty cool. And Kay, uh, writing us out, bro, where, where can people find you? Well, people can find me anywhere that they uh, get social media. I am uh, Movie Man Opinions on everything except uh, Twitter, which is a Movie Man Opinion, which is I only have one opinion that the Bad Batch is brilliant. And, uh, but uh, it's a great opinion. It's the correct opinion. Mm. And uh, so if you want an expert on his own opinions, call me. And uh, going with that, we also have our next episode to be revealed which is we are doing fire island with elizabeth sows we're doing that we're doing that next week it's mm-hmm. going to be great it's going to be fantastic uh elizabeth was on our uh lost D episode uh and we're very excited to have her on the show it's going to be great uh elizabeth is a great dear friend of the show and of us personally once again another person that we got a chance to really get to know well at celebration mm. who's going to be phenomenal to hang out at diet con guys we are hosting that opening night party if you guys are interested in coming uh just let us know and we'll make that happen but Thank you guys all so much. And as we, as always, uh, I want to close out with a little, uh, a little quote from my friend Raglan, uh, dear friend of the podcast. He says, love comes asking for bread.